thanks for coming here. Um, the last uh, last time we spoke, or the last two times we spoke, we talked about how to you how to use um, Git repositories. Um, version control uh, system uh, locally on your machine on, on your computer. Um, now we're today we're talking about how to um, use uh, remote repositories and how to use it to co uh, to collaborate or to use um, to use different computers to work uh, in a, in a um, to manage code. Um, so. Quick recap: um, uh, We talked about how to create a local repository, um, how to add um, files to set rep repository, and we even talked about how to branch and merge um, uh, yeah, branches, how to how to manage branches and how to merge. And this is still um, the bread and butter of Git. Uh, all of this we would still use um, if, you, if we use uh, remote repositories. Um, we will just extend, add another layer on top of that. So if you look at if you if you look at this um, slideshow that I made here, we have the the local the, the local repository in the workspace, and um, we use Git uh, commit and Git um, add to put something in. I'm quickly going to close the door. So, so that we get less destruction. And what we do if we want to add um, a remote repository is that we first we create a remote repository on, um, on, on, on the cloud. And then we link our local repository to the remote repository. So our workspace, the, the actual files that we're working with, will not um, inter interact with the remote repository at all. We will, when we make changes, we first commit it to the local repository. And then with git push, we push these uh, changes from the local repository to the remote repository. And pull, we can pull changes back. Now, once we have a remote repository, what we can then do, we can use the, the give command git clone to Create a new uh, local, a new workspace and local repository um, automatically. That is will then be a complete clone of the of the original one. So that then we can again use git push and git pull to interact with the remote repository. Um, the most common, uh, the two most common. Um, Cloud services for Git remote repositories are GitHub um, and Bitbucket. There are minor differences in them. They are both commercial. They both offer free accounts. Um, you can look at them up. Uh, in this, In this instance, I'm, I'm going to use Bitbucket. Uh, I'm using GitHub, but Bitbucket is actually uh, just the same. So, if you log, if you, you need to create to use Git, uh, GitHub, obviously you have to make it. Create, you have to create an account. It's very straightforward. Um, I expect that anyone uh, knows how to create an account on a on a web service. And when you are um, when you have this, uh, when you have logged in, you basically greet this with this page, and then um, to create a new online repository, you can say start a project. Um, it will tell you here. It will ask you who should own it. In this case, um, I have an option here. I can use it my um, my own account, or I can use the CMS account. But in in this case, I'm I'm using my own. And I say uh, training repo. Um, I can add a description. I can say whether it should be public or private. If it's public, um, anyone can 
copy it, copy it, see it, copy it, search for it. If it's private, um, only I have access to it or, and the people that I actively give access to. But um, as I said before, uh, you have um, with private repositories, usually they have, um, you have some restrictions for the free account. Um, let's ignore this down here for a moment. We don't need this at the moment. And then we just create, say create repository. And that is that way now we have created the re remote repository in the cloud. And um, GitHub and Bitbucket does the same thing. They're really convenient. They tell us exactly what to do in order to link up our local repository to the room. So um, you can have here, uh, if you, it tells you if you have, if you have, if you create, need to create a new repository, look, if you want to create a new local repository and link it, then you have to just do this, um, these, these lines, uh, and you can copy and paste them. In fact, when you press on this button here, it automatically copies these lines into your, into your clipboard. If you have already have an existing repository, um, it's the exact same thing. Uh, but then, of course, you, you, would, you would copy and paste these two. Um, so, ah, oh, there it is. So if I'm if I'm now in this um, in this directory where I want to create them, and um, I have clicked here, the the commands have been com copied into my um, into my uh, clipboard. I can just um, oops. I can just press Command V, and it automatically executes all of these things. In this case, you can see. Actually, look, let's look over here. What it tells me first, it creates this readme.md file uh, with with an echo and then uh, redirect to the readme.md. Uh, and uh, initializes the repository, adds the readme, uh, makes the first commit, and then these two lines are the the important part, and you can see that this is the same lines that are that that are um, repeated down here. Um, this one says, okay, th this one tells the local repository that it has a remote repository. Um, it names it, it names the remote repository origin. That's the default name for the default remote repository. Um, you can name it anything you want, but by default, um, origin would refer to the to the default remote repository. You can add more remote repositories if you want to. Um, yeah. And the second thing is down here, it says git pu push. Um, let's go through it. So git push, so push the local repository, pu push the local changes to the remote repository. The name is origin. So the name of the remote repository is origin and push the master branch. And the minus U says set upstream. So that means that it tells the local master branch that it should look at it, it should look at the remote master branch um, if, if something has changed. So um, it will give you more information um, about where the where the, um, where the how the master branch on the remote is. So we've done this here. And um, we have the readme.md file that we've created with this command up here. And um, if we look at the training repo now here, we can see that um, that uh, the file is already um, submitted. So if we look at the file, it tell it this is a, this is a markdown file. If we want to look at the at the, at the file itself, we can click on raw, so this is just a single line. If we now make changes, let's make changes to the readme file. For example, So I've made some changes. Uh, I'm writing this file. 
Now, git status, this is all from, from last week's. We have modified the file, so I'm git um, commit minus a, so say all the files that have changed should automatically be added. Minus m, give me the message. Uh, And now I've made I've made these changes, and we and we, if we look at the at the log, um, then we see two things. We see here um, we have the the master branch um, here, so that is the that has the commit with better readme, but the origin master. Because we've we've put this minus u in, it it also tracks where the remote repository is is at, and it tells me this is not yet this this commit is not yet has not yet come to the remote repository, and I can make more changes. Um, So now this this thing goes further and further ahead. That's uh, I have a I have an alias by the way. Git lg gives me a gives me a more um, complex uh, a better version here. So it says uh, origin master is still here on this on this commit, but um, but my local repository is already ahead, and and we can see this here as well. So this. This still, this is the 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 uh, readme.md, just um, processed through the uh, markdown filter. But if I now say git push origin master, it tells it tells it to um, push to the origin um, re remote repository the master branch. And now, if I just make a reload here, you can see that the README file has updated. And if you look at the commits, all of these commits are still in there. So it has it has not just updated an, one new snapshot that contains everything in it. It has actually uploaded every individual commit. So that means that you don't have to do these push push um, all that often. Um, you keep track on it on your local repository, and then at the end of the day, make it um, you you make it just a git push. Now I quickly go back here. So get a GitHub account, create an online repository, create a GitHub. Account. So ah yes, HTTPS versus SSH. Now if you look up here, um, here's the link. Um, and that's the same show uh, origin. You can see that the URL is an HTTPS um, link. Um, both GitHub and GitHub bucket again they're the same. They also you can also use an SSH um, uh, uh, URL or an SSH command. Um, the, they are slightly different. Um, HTTPS uh, oops, has no setup, no setup required. Um, works through web proxies, um, so it's 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 less likely to run into firewall issues and stuff like that. It's much easier to set up. SSH you can use. Um, you can. Uh, it's it's a little bit more com complex to set up, but then you can use SSH agents. And to be honest, uh, okay, that's it. Didn't want to go there yet. Um, yeah, that. With with HTTPS, 
Normally what would first happen is that it asks you for your username uh, when you push and then for your password. And of course my password, um, let me quickly bring up my uh, password manager because I strongly recommend using a password manager. This has nothing to do with Git. So. Um, this, uh, you, because it's a public repository, you can always download or, or, or uh, get things down. But of course, to upload, you need to authenticate yourself. So it will ask you for your username and password. Um, for it, if, if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can use this command up, you can use this command up here, uh, use the creden uh, credential um, username. So um, that way, um, and then that's it's actually the um, the, the server, so HTTPS the dot username. It's a little bit complicated. That way I can tell um, Git that my GitHub username is hovault76. So now if I put type git push, it already knows my username, but, I, but I, it still wants my password. If you want to get even more convenient with this, you can use the um, credential helper, um, git config global credential helper. If you have a Mac, if you have a MacBook, um, you can use OS, OS X uh, keychain. That is what I had, um, and that stores my GitHub credentials in the in the um, OS X keychain, which means that it's automatically available. And that was that's why I didn't initially ask for my for my username and password. For Windows, there's a Windows credential, help, uh, credential helper. I'm not, I haven't used it. Um, and apparently you need to have installed Git for Windows to use it. But what is always available, come on, is, is the cache. So if you said git config minus minus global credential dot helper cache, or cache dash dash timeout and then num number of seconds, then Git will store your credentials for a certain amount of seconds. So by default, I think it's 15 minutes. You can, if you say timeout is equals 3,600, then it will store it for an hour. Um, but of course, if you reboot or, ti or, or, or the timeout expires, then you have to put it in again. So, um, Any questions so far? Let's get a little bit, uh, let me grab my breath a little bit. Um, yes, I can hear, I can see someone at, at Sydney. Yeah, uh, sorry, is there any way for Linux users to avoid, you know, typing username and password when they want to use Git push. Um, so, um, as I said, the cache is always available, but that on, but that doesn't survive a reboot or or log out or stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. There is also credential helper dot store. So instead of cache, you can use store, which basically creates a text file on your on your computer with storing your password in plain text might not be the smartest way. Um, if you are comfortable, com uh, uh, if you are confident with, with Linux, then what I would recommend is looking into the SSH part of it. Um, mm -hmm. I will not touch it here, but um, you can use an SSH key and an SSH agent um, to authenticate. And um, that way, uh, that's that. That is what I find is the most convenient thing on uh, if you use Linux. Thank you. 
Okay? Good. So, um, we have now created a remote repository. Now, um, many people will tell you uh, a version control system is not a backup. And with Git, it's particularly true because Git stores, in your lo the local Git repository stores everything in the same directory. So if we just, just, remind, um, uh, just remind you here, there is this .git directory and that contains everything, uh, the, the whole local directory. So if I were to say iron minus rf star, um, I, would, um, I would simply delete everything including the local directory. So it isn't a good way. But of course, once you have a remote repository, it's already um, a lot safer because you now have two copies of your repositories in different, in, on different computers, uh, probably even on different continents. So um, I still wouldn't I still would put a put if if you want, were to run it professionally I would probably still do it and neither GitHub nor Bitbucket promise that they will never lose it but um, of course it's already much safer. But the main reason we're using a remote repository is actually the collaboration part. If 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 we go back here, um, we want to have a we want to have a second repository. So, um, and I'm going to do that here on my computer, but um, normally you would do that on different computers. Uh, for example, on your desktop, on your on your um, work, on, on your on your computer at work, and on your computer at home. So let's simulate that. Um, what I do is again, I use this here. If you look, click on this button, you will get the the actual URL of your of of the repository. I copy this again with this button or by highlighting it and pressing Ctrl C, Command C. And I say git clone, then the URL, and then where to. And I, I'm calling it now home uh, as suggesting that this is on my home computer. Okay, so if I go here into home, um, you can see that the readme file is here. and um, and, and I can and uh, all everything that I've done is here. So it tells me um, so the, the the origin is here. The, uh, the yeah everything's here. If I were to make make changes now, um. Then you can see that I'm at home, I'm further, but on the other computer, um, I'm, I'm not yet there. So, and if I look at the README, um, the change from home is not yet there. <coughs> so, but of course I can, after I finish working from home, before I, before I leave for, for the office again, I do a git push, or I, I could in theory, I can technically a git push origin master, but um, it should automatically set the notice them, yes. So, um, Let me quickly undo the um, put put the uh, keychain in again. We we don't need to always write your, write our password in. <laughs> so and that way, um, if we now look, we look at the remote repository. Um, there's changes from home in there as well. And if I go back to uh, the work computer, um, now I can do. Git pull 
and it pulls these things down. Um, and now I have them here as well. Now, one thing that you should So, yes. So, what are the two things that could happen? Well, um, the first thing is that you could make changes from both com on both computers. So, um, work. So now I'm going to push the whole the the one from home I'm pushing out. And um, net, if I'm now back at work and I now try to push, it will tell me that that I can't. It says rejected. Updates were rejected because remote contains work that you do not have locally. Now this is a difference, for example, between Git and SVN. Uh, SVN would have allowed me to, to upload this, but Git says you need to merge these chain these you need to merge the change on your on, on your local repository. You can't do that on the remote repository. So what you need to do is you need to make pull. And this automatically tries to merge. But of course, this also fails because the changes were in a such a way that they would that um, that they couldn't uh, that it couldn't be resolved automatically. So, so we have this typical merge conflict um, thing, and now we have to decide what we want to do. So we definitely want to get rid of these things, um, and let's say we want to. Want to do that that way, okay? Save. Get status. Um, get at readme. And if I look at the if I look at the logs. It can actually tell. It can actually tell me. Okay, so these were two mergers on two different branches, um, and they have been merged back into uh, into the single one. And now, because it's merged and everything is fine, now I can do a git push, and I can can push everything up again. And if I now make Make a reload here, you can see new change from home, new change from work. Um, let's quickly say, say, I wish I had known this when I was writing my, the my PhD thesis. That would have made a lot of things a lot easier. I've been copying things um, on remote servers and then the firewall would Cut was were activated and yeah it was a mess. GitHub would have would have made so many things so much easier. So this is one way to use um, a remote repository to work by yourself on two different machines. What you would do is in the morning you would do a pull. when you start working you make a big git pull to make sure that your local that your local repository has all the changes that you've made on the other computer before. Then you would work on your computer, would work the whole day, and at the end, before you leave home, you do a git push, push all the all the commits back onto the server, and then at home you can do a, the the same thing again: git pull to get your changes from work, work, git push, and next time at work, at work with, the, with the next git pull, you have all the changes that you did at home. 
Um, any questions so far? Okay, I don't see a lot. Um, then let's talk about collaboration. If you work with someone else, um, you might not want them to, I mean, I mean, you could give everyone right access and then everyone uh, working on the same thing, but then you'd have lots of these conflicts where you have to pull something, merge it, and before you push it up, someone else has done a push, and then you have to merge it again. So um, for that, uh, you have so-called so uh, pull requests and forks. Plus, you might not always have write permission to the repository that you work to, want to co collaborate with. So let's say um, you want to collaborate, you want to make changes to um, a software that you do not have write permission to. So I'm marking this here by a, by a lock. So this, this is someone else, someone else's remote repository. It's public, so you can read it, but you cannot write to it. So you can clone and you can pull, but the push doesn't work because you do not have write permissions. So what you do then is uh, instead you first fork their remote repository into your own. Um, and let's let's do this. Uh, Aiden was so nice um, as to uh, Is that nope? Okay. Uh, in, so. Aiden was too nice to tell me. So I could. I'm trying to do this. I do. This is this is Aiden's personal repository. I do not have write permissions to it. But what I can do, I can click up here on fork. That means I'm on GitHub. I'm making a personal repository just the same as his and ask me where to put it because I have I'm just making this under my own thing. So you can see now I have hovol slash uh, xnc cmp and this is now mine. I have full read and write permissions. Um, if I um, I can just use this um, git clone this and I can Make a, let's make um, a documentation. I hope that's correct. And so, and then I can also do git push. And I can write to it because I'm writing to my own fork of Aiden's repository. So if I if I now look here, you can see that the readme file um, has been added. But of course, um, but of course, uh, the original one, Aiden's one, doesn't because I do not have write permissions. And that's why I need a, uh, that's why I make a pull request. And Aiden is going to do the while I'm doing this, Aiden is, Aiden is going to do the same thing with my training repository so that we can see it from both sides. Um, so what I'm now doing uh, in here, I can say uh, pull request. And basically this is me, new pull request, me, asking Aiden to pull my changes. 
So it says base repository test automatically because it knows it's a fork from this repository. It has already done all the it has uh, put in these the, these things here. Um, I could change them, and then I can say create pull request, and I say um, I can put a note. And then I say create a pull request. And this is this basically starts um, starts a communication between me and Aiden, um, uh, where we can put comments underneath this thing. So if I go back to the training repo, has uh, make it reload. Um, Aiden, Aiden, have you managed to get the pull request yet? I can't hear you. Sorry, yeah, there's a, I have the pull request now. So uh, do you want me to do something? So you can even um, review the the commit so for example I could add a comment to say um, so I've just added a comment on that if you refresh it oh yeah okay sorry it's already there do you, want to, do you want to go through this process of putting another PR um, and pushing another thing in? Yeah, look, we it, only have about 50 used. minutes left, so um, I'm basically saying that yeah, you can you can look at the you can look at the files changed. You can see here all the all the changes. Um, you can make um, you can you can make comments to particular lines, or you can um, or you can make um, things like here. Uh, so what I'm saying, Holger, it might be worth just making a small change and then pushing to show what happens when you how you push to a pull request, because I didn't know about that when I first did it. So if you just make if you just change that netcdf thing again and then yeah. push push again, then you'll see okay. the see what happens. Good. So so let's make it. You just push. That's fine. If you, if you, um, just go back to the top of that pull request. You should see there. Go to the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Now that the, I haven't. It's got a, it's got your other readme change readme to, to include other data files. So just by pushing to that to that branch on on Holger's fork, is that it, it's updated this pull request. So this is a pretty common uh, thing Has you it? want to do with when collaborating is to uh, say, oh, maybe you want to change this code, and all you have to do is change the code, push it back to the to the same oh, commit. Yeah, yeah you're right. So okay. Um, so so I can merge that. So I, I, I now I, I now said um, can say I can actually reply to this. Sure. Come on. 
so comment. And um, now uh, Aiden can um, accept this. Uh... Yeah. So now so yeah he, ha he has accepted this um, this request, and if you now look at the if you now look at this um, at at his thing, you can see that my that the readme file is in there, um, and if you look at the commits, you can actually see um, that I have my commits are even not still under my name. Um, so they're uh, they're my thing, but I don't I still don't have right permission to his repository. So this is a way to to collaborate. Now um, while we're doing this, Aiden has made a pull request to this. So he's he he created he, he created um, a pull request for me. Um, I can look at the at what changes have have been made. So um, I could re I could review uh, the changes. Uh, proof. Don't need to. I, I don't need to do that. But um, basically, I can now say okay, merge pull request. Uh, confirm. And that way, I have now um, made his change uh, also to this repository. Um, so uh, we're using pull requests not only for repositories that we don't have uh, write permissions to, um, but uh, if we are collaborating on something on a document or on on other things. Um, often each of us will have their own branch that we're working on and if we think that something that we worked on is finished or is um, is in a state that we want to merge it into the main branch instead of merging ourselves even though we, we have the permissions to do that we often create a pull request between different branches so you don't only have to create pull requests to, to different um, repositories you can also create pull requests inside of 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 one repository between different branches. And that is a way for us to um, get feedback from the others to say, look, this is the change that I want to make. Um, what do you think about it? Um, have a look at this. Uh, we find it quite helpful and um, use it quite a lot. So as I said, we fork the repository, that is that we can always do, and then we make a pull request um, to basically request um, the original author to say, look, we've made this change, we think it's beneficial, and then they can pull, and that's why it's, they pull our changes into their repository. And that's also why this has to be a remote repository, because of course they can't pull, they couldn't pull from our local desktop computer, our desktop computer might be switched off by the time they react to it. Um, regardless to any firewalls or anything else that might be on the thing. Um, that's roughly what I wanted to talk about, um, how to use Git Remote. Um, it's both GitHub and Bitbucket are really, really uh, put a re really hard effort to make everything as user-friendly as possible. And both of them also have um, a lot of Tutorials both on YouTube and um, and and uh, documentation on their website about how to use it. Uh, if you want to look at the into the SSH, um, set, how to set up SSH, um, there's a lot of information about that there. So um, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, no other questions. We have still 10 minutes. Um, Holger? Yes? So, um, this is sort of a, this is maybe a little uh, more um, subtle, but I'm just doing another pull request. Um, but this time what I've done is I've branched 
before I've done it. Um, so um, in this case, this is a branch. If, if they look at the top there, they can see that's from a branch called Clean PR. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's always a good idea to to branch before you make changes and to try and keep your master. Uh, if you're in a shared, if you're sh in a shared code thing, particularly if it's your own code, it's not such a big deal. But a shared project, it's always a good idea to do all your changes on a branch and keep your master clean. Uh, so that you can always pull from the origin, and then and then uh, and then make a new branch. So if you have some code changes and it's taking you some time to get them fixed, and the, and there's activity on the on the origin on the on the upstream uh, repository, then and then you want to make another change, but you don't want to don't want to change it in your current branch. You can go back to the master, pull from the master, make a new branch, make whatever change you want. And do a pull request from there, and it doesn't affect the branch that you were on. If you if you make changes in your master, it gets very, very tricky. Yeah. So yeah, if, yeah it's, that's that's true. That's so true. It, so if if um, Holger merges that pull request, then um, then all I have to do is on my copy of his um, my fork of his report, because it's my local copy. I can just check out the master branch again. Then I can just do git pull. Um, I've called his one upstream. Um, and so, if, so what happens then is, even though I've got all those changes in my own branch, now all I'm doing is just saying, well, I just want it to. I'm going to I'm going to pull those changes as as they are seen from after the pull request because the branch is just a temporary thing, and it just keeps the um, it keeps the history uh, cleaner. And also uh, means that you can always go back to the master branch and pull. And I say this because I've got myself into trouble in the past before I started using this uh, workflow more. Um, so yeah. it's just always a good idea not to not to do anything in the master for for a shared repository. It's it's less of an issue for your own code. Mm. That reminds me, um, how. Do you and maybe I, I don't know I don't know this from uh, the tip of my tongue. How do you, if if I wanted to make to to pull all, if let's say you have made more changes to the to this um, file, how do I keep my master up to date with yours? Is there some well, sort of? Well, yeah. So you you need so what I did with my fork of yours, I added your origin your your repository is as an up I call it upstream so I said git remote oh, yeah. and upstream and yeah. the Holger Wolf one and then and then I just I did a pull from the upstream branch um, so that's that's yeah. just they're just names so basically, they're, they're off basically what you do is you, you co I copy this as is yours yeah well, and now I say git yeah. uh, remote at upstream and, yeah. And this. That's right. And now I can get say uh, git pull upstream master. And yep. now I'm pulling I'm pulling yours. Um, yep. uh, That's right. And that you way can. I could. That's right. You can. Oh, Siri. So, Thanks, Siri. I don't need you. So in fact, yeah. So so what I did was I cloned from when I pulled when I did when I was uh, making a, a pull request to your repository, I, I I forked it. I used the I said git clone from my fork. I made I made a made a branch, made a change, um, pushed it back to my fork again, and then did the pull request. And then I added yours as the upstream, and then went back to the master branch and pulled from the from your upstream, from your repository. And then I did a git push origin master. So I pushed it back up to my um, yep. fork so that my fork stayed uh, the same as your, my master branch stayed the same as yours. Yep. In fact, you don't need to do that. Uh, if you're only ever working on 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 uh, branches, it doesn't really matter if your master branch on your GitHub uh, fork is up to date. Because you never but, but it can't help. It can't hurt either. It can't. Just hurt. one sure. more command. You you, you, you sure. update the branch from the from the upstream, push it into your own master, and then you. 
Yeah. It's one it's more all, command. It's all the same. It's all the same. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so you should think about the repository on GitHub as being a bit like just a repository on your on your file system. Um, it doesn't have any any special status really. Um, it doesn't automatically know anything. It doesn't automatically get updated just because you've updated the one on your local file system. They're, they're, they're sort of they're sort of stupid. You have to tell them what to do. Okay, um, maybe because I was asked about it before, um, just a quick term about um, about using SSH. Um, I'm not going to go into details, but I give you some information about how how it works. You go to set into your settings, um, and then uh, SSH and GPG keys, and then you can just add um, a new public SSH key to this thing, and then uh, GitHub will automatically recognize that. And if it gets an SSH um, authentication, where you can use an SSH agent, um, then it will automatically accept it. So um, I'm not going to into detail there because we're almost finished, but. Um, that's how you set up SSH uh, connections, and there there are there are good documentations both in video and in, and in text form uh, on GitHub and Bitbucket how to do that. So yeah, um, thank you very much.